This is looking at GGMD A1 uh, worksheet number four, all about the development of the formula for the trapezoid. Um, the trapezoid actually is probably the group my favorite, and the reason it'd be my favorite is it's just an awkward and weird shape. Its formula seems to be like, where did that come from? Like, I get triangles, I get parallelograms, rectangles, easy stuff, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, we get some crazy awkward formula that says the area is one half B1, B2, H. Like, whoa, where did this come from? Um, the trapezoid, when you look at the different types of trapezoids, you can see that they're basically composite shapes. Like you can see in them rectangles and triangles or many triangles or parallelograms and triangles. They, they can be lots of things. And this is a very cool formula that somehow handles whatever it looks like. Uh, under the Elmo, I'm going to go through a couple of ways to explain this, um, which is just, to me, it's, it's definitely within our realm and it's cool mathematics. But um, first of all, let's explain base and height and so on. So there are always going to be the two parallel sides. There are the bases, base one and base two. doesn't matter who's who. The height is always perpendicular to the base. So we might think of, you know, the height would be here or the height would be here. It could be anywhere perpendicular to that base and so on. Now again, th this is a very cool thing like, whoa, where does this come from? <clears throat> well, just, and again, I'm going to show you some of the ways where it comes from, but i got to do it uh, here just quickly too. Some of the cool ideas are like this idea of doubling, and you'll see me do this in a minute, but you take this guy and you duplicate it, put it on its back, and slap it right here. Now that creates a rectangle, in this case, because of this shape, a rectangle, and this rectangle here is exactly B1 and B2, the base, times the height. But we want the trapezoid, so we want half of that. I'm going to do this again under the Elmo, but but I'm just showing you some really cool ways to make sense of where this formula that just seems so random and abstract comes from. And then we're going to look at doing some solving. Maybe let me do a quick solving question. Um, there's some great uh, kinds of stuff that goes on here. You know, um, they will do things like, uh, let's see here. So if we wanted to find uh, this area, we might uh, be missing some information. So let's say this is 17, uh, this is uh, 8, and um, let's say this is, I don't know, let's say 10. So this is a trapezoid and I want to find its area. Well, I need to know its two bases. I have its height if we knew that this was a right angle. So I'm really missing this information. And um, we use a lot of old stuff to get the new stuff, like the P uh, Pythagorean theorem. If I was to drop down this height, I would have an 8 here because it would be the same here. And the Pythagorean theorem of 8, 15, and 17 I'd use the Pythagorean theorem or a triple, which I've memorized, which gives me 15 here. And I know this is 10. So I would say 1 half B1, B2 times uh, 8. Again, base 1, base 2, height divided by 2. And really, you can see what I'm doing. I mean, again, students could do 8 times 10 to get this for 80. They could do 8 times 15 divided by 2 to get this triangle, add it together, and you'd get the same answer. I'm going to do a bunch of examples and kind of go through where this formula comes from. This is a cool uh, shape, very cool. Trapezoid is quite a cool shape. It's actually a composite shape made up of a couple of smaller shapes to make it. it you could view it like in this one maybe as you know, um, a square kind of or a rectangular and triangular shape or... I don't know, you can see that these could be broken up in lots of different ways. That'll be part of how we come up with the formula. And these are all just different types. That last one's an isosceles trapezoid, which means that it has uh, two equal legs to it and so on. I'm going to kind of go through, uh, this is one of my favorite shapes uh, because of the variety that you can do to show where this formula comes from. The formula is one that students struggle to remember. It's uh, the area equals one-half 
base 1 added to base 2 times the height. So it's like no other formula. It's just like, you know, it's scary. Uh, where did this come from? So I'm going to show you a couple of techniques. I'm going to go fast because there's a bunch of them. This first technique is called the doubling technique. And the idea is to simply double this. So I'm going to take the current trapezoid and flip it on its back. And uh, I will create two of them by doubling it. That's what doubling means. You see what I did? I took this one and kind of dropped it on its back. This is the B1. Here's our B2. The height is still the same. So guess what? In this case, it made a rectangle. And I know the formula of a rectangle, which is its base. In this case, B1 and B2 is its base, times its height, which in this case is H. But that would be the rectangle. I only wanted the uh, uh, trapezoid, which is exactly half of that. Whoa, look what just appeared. So you say, oh, that happened because, uh, you know, it's one of those right triangle varieties of it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip this thing on its back. So B1 would be here. This would match up nicely. I'm going to just freehand this just to speed myself up a little bit. This would drop in here and be B2. The height is still right here, right? That's still the height. Now, we didn't make a rectangle, but we did make a parallelogram. And you and I know the formula for a parallelogram. It's base times height, still H there. And I only need half of that. There it is again. Bam. All right, that's one technique. Let's try a second technique. This is by dissection. And what this is going to mean is I'm going to cut up and move things around. So I'm going to cut this uh, in half. So I'm going to take the height and cut it down its half. Now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to drop it right into this spot. So it's going to look a little bit like this when I am done. There's where it goes. I noticed something cool happened when I moved it around. This time I, I didn't make any new area. I just put it on its, cut it in half and put it on its back. I made a parallelogram. The parallelogram has a base of B1 and B2. All right. And I notice it's got a new height. The height is exactly half of the original height. Well, there it is. One half B1 plus B2 times H. Crazy. Let's do it again. Here's another variety. Cut this in half. And it's going to fit right here. Here's my B2, or my B1, sorry. And there it is. And this time, I made a rectangle. And I think you know what's coming, don't you? Here's B1, and B2 is the base of my rectangle. And it's one half of the height is, the, is that dimension. And that will exactly be the same as that guy there. Cool. Now, another way to do it is to dissect it into smaller shapes. And this is kind of what I was saying earlier that's kind of cool about this. When you look at a trapezoid, do you see it as two triangles? Do you see it as two triangles in a square? Do you see it as, as uh, a parallelogram and a triangle? Do you see it as three triangles? And depending on how you see it will depend on how you want to break down its formula. Um, and I'm just going to maybe kind of do, well, maybe I'll do two of these real quick. So I'm going to see this as a rectangle. There's my rectangle and a triangle. <clears throat> now my rectangle, here it is here, and my triangle. And I'm going to add those two areas together. Now that's B1 times H. That's this guy, B1 times H. And let's get this dimension. What would this one be? Ah, the whole distance was B2. So what's left would be minus the B1. So this would be a triangle, which would be 1 half its base, which is B2 minus B1 times the height. So this would give me my triangle, right? There's my base is B2, the whole distance, minus the B1 part of it, because that's the, up to there. And there's my B2 minus B1. So let's multiply this out. A little algebra here. Don't get scared. This is 1 half B2H minus 1 half B1H. All right. Let's see what we got. I've got 1 B1H, and I've got minus a half B1H. Uh -huh. See, those are, those are the same terms. So I get just 1 half B1H left plus 1 half B2H left, 
and I can pull out a 1 half and an h, and I'm left with b1 plus b2. That is some algebra magic, my friends. Let me do, uh, let's, let's do one more just to show you how cool this gig is. Uh, let's see, this is two triangles, so let's make two triangles. I, I see it as this one up here, and I see it as this one down here. So, let's do this. Triangle 1 has a, a base of B1, and a height, its height, even though it's outside, is if this is my base, its height is right here, the H, and I would take half of Here's my other triangle. It would be one half its base, which is B2, and its height is still that H. And actually, this is even easier than the last one. Take a look. I take out my one half H, and I get B1 and B2. There's another relationship. Crazy good. All right, finally, got to speed up here. Keep going. Let's do some math now. Let's show you how to do this. So our formula is one half B1 and B2 and H. Uh, it doesn't matter who B1 and B2 is, but I would add uh, 22 and 5 is 27, and I would multiply it by my height of 4, so that's basically 2 times that, so 54 centimeters squared is the magic number there. Now again, even though I could do it in pieces, I'm going to use my formula, which is 1 half B1, which we'll call 8, and B2, which would be 22. And my height is 8. So this just turns into 4 times uh, 30. So that's 120 centimeters squared. This is all multiplication. So um, you can put that together first and then take half of that, which would be 15 times 8. Or you can take half of 8 and multiply by 30 and so on. Let's see here. Uh, of course, this is 8. This is a missing piece. I know this is 5. This is a right triangle. Here we go again. 5x squared equals 13 squared. x equals 12. I'm getting used to that trick. So it would be 1 half base 8, base 20, times height of 5. So this is a half of 28 times 5. Half of 28 is 14 times 5. 50, 60, 70 is my value there. And again, you can do it in pieces, but I'm trying to teach you how to do it all in one shot, which is kind of nice. All right, this is 4. This is 60 degrees, so this is 4 root 3. All right, this is going to be a messier one. So this is uh, 4 root 3. This is 4 root 3, and this is 4 root 3. So base 1 is 4 plus 4 root 3. That's this base. Added to this base is 4 root 3 times 1 half the height. Here we go. Now this can be combined. I'm going to do that before things get too messy. This is 4 plus 8 root 3. And um, I'm going to multiply the 1 half times this guy here. Uh, so I get 2 root 3 times... 4 plus 8 root 3, and I'm leaving everything in exact here. I don't know. You might go to a decimal, but I like this. This is 8 root 3, and then it's 16 times the square root of 9, which is 3. So, final answer, a little messy for some. You may not like all that business. It would be 48 added to 8 root 3 centimeters squared. Maybe I better just uh, check in on that one. I was going pretty fast. So 4, 4 root 3, that's not bad. This is a square, so they're all 4 root 3s. So base 1 is 4 plus 4 root 3. Base 2 is 4 root 3. That's what that is. The height is 4 root 3. There it is, times 2. And the rest is just using uh, a radical. Let me do one of these guys and maybe just uh, give you a tip on the next one, then we'll get out of here. This is cool stuff. This is an isosceles one, so you always use this kind of symmetry trick here. If this is 6 and that's 8, that leaves 2 for what remains. So this has got to be a 1 and this has got to be a 1. And now you can use uh, this little relationship here to find what your height is. So 1 squared plus x squared equals 3 squared. 1 plus
plus x squared equals, uh, let's see, 9, x squared equals 8, x equals the square root of 8. So this happens to be the square root of 8. Therefore, our formula is 1 half, the height and the base is added together, 8 and 6 is 14. And so we get uh, 7 times the square root of 8. Now, uh, let's do a little bit of teaching on that one, too, for you. 7 times the square root of 8, uh, that can be reduced as 2 root 2. Um, and so we get 14 root 2 centimeters squared. Again, this is just reducing the radical to go from uh, 8, the square root of 8 to 2 root 2. Finally, one more of uh, these tricky little guys. These have lots of fun little tricks to them. Uh, here, this is 9, so this would also be 9. I'm missing these two pieces, but they have to be the same. And I see a 3, 4, 5, little Pythagorean triple there. Again, x squared is 4 squared equals 5 squared. x will equal 3, so we get 3 over here. Now we got 1 half base times, uh, sorry, no, that's height times our basis, which is a 9 and a 15. And so we get 2 times 24. 48 centimeters squared. Lots of, lots of fun there. Good luck.